Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is um, April 27th of 2018. And this is, thank God it's Friday. And I'm going to do a little, well, it's not something different, but I... I think I even have a playlist set up with uh, stories. So I think I'm going to tell you three things from the past. I'm not sure which three. I know, I think, one of them. Yeah. Because I was exchanging emails with somebody and something came up that reminded me about that. I'm not sure what the other two will be. Uh, so let me tell you, I'm moving stuff around in the room here again, and I'm not, I'm just in the middle of it. <laughs> so what I'm doing is moved my bed. It's, it was real nice just along the wall over there, but now I've got it cutting out this way so that, let me see. Well, you can't see with that camera so much. Let me switch cameras. That's not it. That's it. So, I, well, you can see it right there. Yeah, I don't have the shelves in it yet, but I'm putting that dresser over there. And then I'm going to put my Roku TV up so I can use the Roku TV over there. So I'll be... Here and I have my computer screens in front of me, but I can look over there and have something going on, you know, over there. Also, you see my uh, digital camera, and you see the cable here runs over into uh, HDMI uh, on that cam link that I told you about. And the reason I wanted to show you the, let me switch back here. Let me just turn, well, can we turn this camera here? Uh, there we go. And there's the problem. That, uh. The uh, small tripod I have there. When I, uh, try, the whole tripod moves. And that was one of the reasons that, and I mentioned this the other day, that I uh, purchased a new tripod. And I purchased a, uh, this is not it because it's on this camera, but I purchased a floating head or a, uh, where it moves very smoothly. And I told you the other day that I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I'm going to tell you going to tell you a little secret here, but I don't want you to tell anybody. I told you that I couldn't figure out how to do it and get the, uh, get the head that I bought on that tripod there because it came with, is this it? Uh, yeah, this is actually the, the head that was on the uh, tripod that I bought. And it, it's, it's smooth and it works well, but I bought the one that's on there now. Anyway, I bought the, uh, I couldn't get it on. And I tried everything I could to figure out how to get it on. I, the instructions were so small, couldn't even, even with magnifying glasses, I couldn't. But today I figured out all I had to do was go to the tripod May switch cameras again. That's not it. Where is it? Oh, it, it is it. Let's see. Got. It. Let's see. Turn it here without the whole tripod moving. Okay, that's still not it. So. 
all I had to do was unscrew it right here. I mean, that's all I had to do. I didn't need the Allen wrench that they sent me or anything. All I had to do was unscrew it, and then this is when I took it off. This is, you know, and then screw the new head on. So, oh, man, don't tell anybody I'm that stupid. Uh, well, people already know it. Uh, I mentioned, too, that I uh, wasn't sure how much I was actually going to use the digital camera hooked up this way. But then I've made a couple videos since then using it. And I I think I'm growing. It's growing. I think I'm starting to like it. Um, and I haven't fixed up the app yet. There's an app that will let me control the camera with my cell phone. Um, it's on there someplace. It'll let me control. Well, let me see. It's got to be here. I think I set up a, whoops, set up a page. Here it is. Um, I don't have the thing linked yet. But it'll let me control the um, cancel, back out, back out, off. It will let me change the settings and things. So I think I'm going to eventually use that. Um, another reason, I have the Roku TV, and I've done this in the past several times, is actually being used as a monitor by my ex-wife in the living room at her computer desk. And what I'm going to do, though, is, which I've done, and I've done switched around several times like this, is take the Roku TV put it there, and I'm going to take one of these 27-inch monitors. She doesn't even know the difference when they're hooked up. I'm going to take it in there and hook it up, and she can use that. Because I think uh, here next week I'm going to order a 27-inch 4K monitor, and uh, I think I'll have it next week. And my plan is that... That will be the, the only monitor that I will use. So actually that frees up another 27-inch ASUS monitor. But then I may decide that, that I want to have one next, you know, next to it. But I don't think I want to have a 4K monitor with a 2650 by whatever it is resolution and then have a 1980 by 1020 you know, non-4K next to it. But I might change my mind, knowing me. So, I think what I'll just do is I've got uh, three cameras. I'm going to start with three stories that are true. Um, and these are not they just, this one just, like I said, I was exchanging emails about something. I think somebody was, somebody was, we were, uh, would I, somehow we got a, would I work uh, security at a certain place or whatever? And I, he, I was being asked that. And then I went into a long story to, in an email to him. And then this part of the story that I told, which is true. So I'm going to tell you that now. Uh, my wife and I had a tropical fish shop. Well, I started out life as a welder for over 10 years. And uh, then I got married and my wife and I had a tropical fish shop for about four years. And then I... We sold the business, and then for a short period of time, I sold printing. Uh, and I loved that job, but it didn't pay enough money. Uh, might tell you a little bit about that sometime. And then, the businesses that I were calling on, uh, I'd go and there'd be they'd, the front door, you know, small businesses. I didn't have the, the courage to call on a large 
like go to a purchasing department at a major company or whatever. I didn't have the, uh, just I didn't have the courage to do it. But I could call on small businesses because I'd had a small business and because I knew all the people, or I maybe didn't personally know all those people, but you know I knew where they were all around there and. So I sold the printing and the advertising material and stuff like love doing that. Um, but when I called on some of them, I'd call and their door had been smashed in or a window had been smashed in. They had, you know, new glass being put in or they'd have card or they have uh, plywood up there temporarily or whatever. And I said, what happened? And so somebody broke in and I thought, you know, Security might be a good thing to be in, and this is before security became what it became later. Uh, so, um, so I went to work for a Burns Security one day. Actually, I like to say that I worked for Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo, you know, and so on. And I just used the the just so I can say I worked and I worked for him one day. Actually, I. Uh, but then I went to work uh, for, I think it was Wells Fargo. Then I went to work for a company. It was a, wasn't a major chain or anything. It was just a, a family that had a, a security business that they set up out in Overland Park, Kansas. And so they hired me in, and then they put me at a uh, Kansas City Art Institute, and they uh, in the museum. I mean, it wasn't a big, it was a, you know, but they didn't want their paintings and stuff damaged. So I was there and I thought, oh man, this sucks, you know. Hardly anybody came in and and then they called me and uh, said, okay, uh, you're going to be a patrol officer now and the area you'll be patrolling are all our accounts that are in Overland Park, Kansas and Olathe, Kansas, and then two nights a week, if necessary, you'll cover Prairie Village. Uh, a couple people might call you for an escort, but the Prairie Village police do not like private security, so don't get out of your car, you know. Oh, God. So I had every, uh, Overland Park is a, a big city, and I had every car dealer except one on Metcalf, major, you know, thing that I had to check all that. It was an impossible job to do. Um, but anyway, the they never, they just gave me a list of the accounts. Nobody ever rode with me around and said, here's, you know, they just gave me a list. And then the only thing they really told me was, okay, well, you had to, well, they told me there was this, um, at, Two different times I had to be at a nursing facility uh, to escort the nurses or staff coming and be out there just so they could, you know, come watch them come in and go at a certain, everything, these things were at specific times that made it impossible to be uh, unpredictable or random or uh, that type of stuff and doing the job of patrolling it literally you could set your watch by me so and most of the places i could only make it to one time during the night those businesses thought they were being that i was that somebody was out there patrolling coming by and checking on them you know on hour to hour and stuff like that. and you could set your watch by me and i'd be lucky and i could only make it to and that was hard work but uh, anyway they so they told me about, you got to be at that nursing place. Might have been something else. And then they said, okay. And I think it was 2 o'clock in the morning that bars closed in uh, Kansas. And so they said, um, okay, let's say it's 2 a.m. Okay, you have to be at 2 a.m. out at such and such a bar. I think it was in Olathe. It was in Olathe, yeah. Kansas. And uh, you, you'll have to close it up. They all announce there, hey, you know, 2 a.m. or, you know, before 2 a.m. they'll say, you know, hey, uh, we're going to close here in 15 minutes. You, you know, 
have your final drink and whatever. But then at 2 a.m., you know, they will announce, okay, we're closing up now. And then, then it was up to me to get everybody out. Okay, it was Olathe, Kansas. The bar was the closest bar to the Olathe Naval Air Station. So they told me, okay, um, you, you better take your nightstick in with you. And the other the lieutenant or whatever, yeah, I'll take your nightstick in with you. So my, <clears throat> my first night I go out there and I drive up and I can see Marines. It was bar was busy, you know. I can see Marines coming and going in and out the door. And I thought, should I take my nightstick in with me? I thought, if I take my nightstick in with me, uh, they're probably going to shove it up my ass and toss me out the door. So, okay, I'm not going in with my nightstick. And uh, so I went on in. They announced it's 2 a.m., bars closing. And I thought, oh, no. And uh, then every table that, w that was uh, nobody was sitting at, or even if somebody was sitting there, I went and turned the chairs up on the table. And uh, then when, and I was, of course, I, w I was walking around in the place, and people were like, you know, some people were like, oh, okay, I'm just finishing this up, and, you know, I'm leaving around. And I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm going to hate this job to myself, you know. This, this 1 a.m. thing or 2 a.m. thing is going to, this is crap, you know. And then a uh, Marine gets up out of his chair, you know, and I put it up on the table there. And he comes up, he was a big guy. <laughs> Not only was he a Marine, but he was a big Marine. And... Uh, I think I probably weighed 135 pounds or something. Uh, and he came over and he said, uh, what are you going to do if I don't leave? And I said, well, I sure hope you're going to leave because the bar is closing. And uh, he said, well, what are you going to do if I don't? And I said, well, I got a job to do and I'm going to have to see if I can get you to leave. And then he, I forget, he kind of laughed or something like they might have even patted me on the shoulder or whatever. Said, I'm going, buddy. And he left. I never actually had any trouble. I never had any trouble at that uh, at that bar. I thought that I, that I would. And I didn't look forward to, uh, to going out there every day. Let me switch to this other camera. Save the. This is the Logitech camera. The other was a Logitech camera, too. Okay, what... I guess I'll continue on the same vein, and I think I might have told this story before. Um, and it bothers me, really. I mean, I don't think about it all the time, and I never thought about it. But it does, it does bother me. Um, that company I was working for that had me patrolling all of, you know, Olathe and other areas, they had a captain or a young guy, captain or lieutenant or something like that, that he was an asshole. Um, like, he never showed me, you know, anything. Uh, he never did anything as far as I'm sure he had stuff to do, you know, at the office, you know. When they first went out there, to be, and I was going out, they didn't know why, and that's when they called me out and said, hey, you're going to be patrolling. He was there with another guy, and they had uh, the remote control for a Radio Shack answering machine. Back That was back when they were tape and everything, you know. And they were recording and they were listening to messages. And I thought, that's not, they're not getting their own messages the way they were, what they were talking or whatever. And, and then I realized what they were doing is... Uh, 
they were calling somebody else's. Yeah, so they were doing it over the telephone, I guess. They were calling another security company and using the remote control to get that company's messages. Uh, and then they were writing down, you know, like, uh, this is Bill Brown with uh, ABC Construction Company. Uh, I'd be interested in having your patrol service uh, call me back at such and such. And I thought, oh, man, these guys, this is unethical. Undoubtedly against the law. I'm sure it's against, you know, FCC <laughs> laws, too, and all kinds of shit. So I didn't have a very good, and the lieutenant or captain, whatever, was involved in this. The guy who really ran the company for the family or whatever. So, uh, anyway, I did my job as best I could. Um, and the only other contact I had with the lieutenant or the captain, whatever, was uh, he, I think when I came in, or I don't know how, it, maybe he called me on the radio, I forget what it was, but he said, uh, the guy, the pizza guy out in Olathe says he never sees you. He find, We had little cards that we would stick in the door. Of course, that only meant we were there one time, but I'm sure the clients thought that we were there multiple times. And it was, well, that was Olathe, so uh, I either hit that place, you know, I went on duty, I think, like at I mean, 7 p.m. or something and worked till... 7 a.m. or I forget, I forget, but so I wasn't getting to the pizza place until a little bit before one o'clock or a little bit after one o'clock. I'm not sure we had any other accounts other than those two accounts there. And then I was back into Olathe to, to do the escorts of the nurses and to do the other, check the other buildings or whatever. So anyway, the lieutenant says, uh, arrogantly over the radio or I think or whatever meet me at account such and such oh man I thought okay so I went out there at the pizza place and you know, I go in I'd never been in it because it always closed when I got there and I only made it once a night and uh, little tenant or whatever yeah this is you know this is one of my officers or whatever and he says you know, Mr. S uh, well, Sam Smith. Mr. Smith says that he never sees you. And uh, how come you're not getting out here so he can see you? And I th was thinking, you know, you fucking ass. There's no way I can. This is what I'm thinking. You know, no fucking ass. There's no way I can fucking make it out here. You know, <laughs> because of the things they had me set up the area. I was covering an entire city, every car dealer except one on Metcalf and there was a lot of car dealers and they have a lot of doors and things to check and there was other things, you know, restaurants and so I said, uh, well, I, you know, I come out and I check the thing. Well, he doesn't see you. He wants to see you. And uh, I said, okay, I'll, I'll try to do better. And, you know, and then I left. So strike two on this asshole, you know. And then wasn't very long after that. I mean, you know, a day, a week, a month or something. I don't know. He calls me and he says, or no, I, th I think it was in the office. Yeah, I was in the office getting ready to go out. Okay, I want you to go out to 95th and I-70, I think it was. Or I-35 no, I or something like that. 75th and I-35. You'll see such and such I'd tell you if I could remember. You'll see such and such a security patrol service. What I want you to do is follow him all night and write down every place that he goes and shines his light because we all know that's the his accounts, you know, and then we can go and contact those people and take the accounts away from him. And I said, uh, well, you know, I've, I've got accounts that I need. No, this is what you're to do. This is what I want you to do. You do that. You follow. Forget about the rest. 
And I said, I really need to check the, you know, no, no, that's what you're going to do. So, so I went out, started checking my accounts. You know, he said to do it at 1 a.m. in the morning or something because the guy, that is a patrol officer, I think went out there and ate at a Denny's or something. And then, so of course I didn't do it. I just did my regular patrol stuff. And then I think the next night or something like that, how come you didn't turn in a list or what I said? I didn't do it. I had stuff I needed to check on. No, I want you to do this. I'm telling you to do this, you know. I went out. I just did my regular stuff. So then he, uh, you know, called me into the office or whatever. I told you. And I said, I'm not doing it. You can take this job and you can shove it up your ass. Uh, it's improper to do that. It's unethical to do that. Uh, so, and I knew then I knew what he was going to do too. I just, I tell you all I'm pretty stupid, but I'm smart about some things. So he said, uh, okay, uh, give me your commission, a police commission by, issued by the Board of Police Commissioners of Kansas City, Missouri. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. You have to do, you have to do that. I said, no, I don't have to do that. I said, I will take it down tomorrow and turn it into the private officer's commissioning unit. I'm not giving it to you because you'd say you didn't get it. You'd tear it up. You'd do something because you're an unethical SOB. I'm not giving it to you. And so he says, well, I'm reporting you to the police. He calls, you know, the uh, private officer's commissioning unit. I had, had actually, I'd had so many uh, accounts. I mean, so many, I'd worked hadn't worked early that long, but still, at the time, it seemed like I'd worked for a bunch of different, that uh, I knew that the guy, you know, he was the one in charge. He only, basically, you know, had a couple of secretaries or whatever. And he's saying, I told him he has to turn over that commission to, you know, to me, and then I'll send it down to you. And then I said, you know, loud enough, I said, let me talk to Sergeant so-and-so. And then he said, okay, well, the Sergeant wants to talk to you. And I said, uh, this guy's a fucking prick. And uh, I told him that I would turn the commission in to you tomorrow morning, but I'm not giving it to this asshole. And he said, okay, Jim, just bring it down when it, you know, bring it down when you want to, bring it down at your, you know, convenience and everything. And I said, thank you very much. So that was that story. You know, that was not the story I intended to tell. I went to that story, I think. That was not the story I intended to tell. But I'm going to tell you what I intended to tell you before I got sidetracked on that story. And that will be my last story for today. Let me switch cameras here. Nope. Yes. No, that's not it. No, I'm pointing. I see myself. I, and I tell you, I am dumb. Yeah, I saw myself pointing. I thought that was on the camera. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, th I think I mentioned that it was a sad story and something that has bothered me. And uh, then I got sidetracked and told you a different story. Because I have a lot of stories, kind of hate to call, kind of hate to call them stories because it sounds like they're not for you know, not real. Oh, that was it. Yeah. So uh, after working for that watchman service, uh, that was the name of it. Um, my wife and I we set up uh, our own patrol service merchant security and um, so I went out and I signed up businesses in a small area like a police patrol district area where you know whatever I signed up the ones that I and the area basically that encompass the area that I was been selling the printing and advertising uh, uh, specialties and stuff so I went and signed them up. Um, 
we ran an ad in the weekly paper for that area. And that's another story to tell you. Only one time did anybody ever call me. I always had to go to people. We had an ad, a display ad. It had showed the badge that merchant security, arrest vandalism, and then oh, I forget exactly. I had to learn the paperwork and everything. So I forget what it said that I came up with myself. You know, we're a private security company. We're not uh, your local law enforcement. Uh, blah 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 blah, and kind of. Uh, I put that on there. And <laughs> That will feed into my next story sometime because I just it was on everything I handed out. And when I uh, talked to people, I told them the same thing, made it perfectly clear that we were not police officers, not law enforcement. Uh, we were a private security service. Um, so anyway, I, I did really people, you know, because we didn't charge very much, but, you know, we, I was signing up everybody. I could sit pretty much the way it should be, you know, in the middle of the area, roll the windows down at two or three o'clock in the morning. I could hear for blocks and blocks and blocks. If there had been glass breaking or something, I would have, uh, and I did, I didn't, I didn't, I ran into, by the way, the guy that that other company had been calling and getting his, uh, uh, account information by his, I ran into him. He had a patrol service and he was like me, one man operation. Um, I didn't tell him about that, uh, but he knew that they had, that they had done it and he was going around, you know, the slips I told you about that were, <laughs> that watchman service had to stick in the door. He, he had a whole thing. He showed me, he had gone around and then was taking him out of those doors so that the people who came in the morning or whatever, well, there's no, nobody put a thing in my door last night. Anyway, he seemed like a nice guy, but, uh, so anyway, I went to a, it had been about 95th and I think South 71 Highway or 95th and Bannister Road. I can't remember. Anyway, I went to a liquor store that uh, there had been a, a bar there and some other things, and the highway came through and to widen or do something, and they ha had the places move, except for the liquor store. And I think maybe the highway, I think that, um, I think they messed up somehow. I think maybe they decided, okay, we don't need the, you know, I think the idea was they would all have to move right there, but then I think maybe the highway decided, no, we'll put the overpass here or do something. No, that place doesn't have to move. So it was there all by itself and sort of a bad, you know, a liquor store and 71 highway and was it 435, whatever, I think it was. Anyway, a bad area. Somebody could rob the place or whatever and be gone pretty damn quick and you know you go one way you're going into you know Missouri or you were in Missouri you go one way down the highway but you go this other way down your highway and you're still you're heading towards you know or you can go that way and you're heading in a mile or a couple miles you're in Kansas and I thought man these people need the service so I went in and there was a man and woman working there and I, I explained and they said, oh, please, we, we both, we, we don't own the place. The, the owner will be in like at one o'clock in the morning. Could you please, please come back and talk to him because we really think we should have this, your service. So, uh, and I said, sure, I'll be back at one. Oh, you're sure you, you'll, you'll be coming back for sure. I said, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be here. And they said, okay, thank you. So at one o'clock I go back, go in. The owner is there, and I started, you know, hey, you know, I have a patrol service in this area, and I'm not interested, not interested. And, of course, I didn't say, hey, both the people working for you, you know. I didn't put them in that position like that or anything. I said, uh, 
you know, the service, I forget what it cost. I said, I forget what it was, you know. It wasn't very much. $10 a month, $15. I forget what it was, you know. And, uh, no, no, not interested, don't need it. And I said, you know, I have a very small area here that I patrol. I said, I can't guarantee that every night when this place closes that I'm going to be out in the parking lot, going to be here. But I'll try to be here as often as I can, you know, especially at closing time and other times. And no, not interested. I've got an alarm system. And I said, normally I would have just said, you know, but I said, well, you know, the alarm system, you know, you hit the button and then the police are going to respond. I would, you know, nope, not interested, don't want the service. I said, okay, uh, thank you very much. I don't think, I wished because of circumstances later on, I wish I had said, uh, let me, I'll give you my service for free, you know, for a month. And then if you, you know, I wish I'd have done that. Uh, about a week later or less, I saw on the news where the police at about the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department at about 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning, the police found the door not locked on the business, the liquor store, and nobody was there. And they found the couple dead. They they were actually removed from the place and uh, apparently killed later. Um, not very far from where I lived. I lived on at that time on 119th Street. And it was, which was, okay, well, that liquor store was about like 95th Street. And I was on about like 119th Street. But it was, they were found, they were down the road someplace or something. And of course, they were both killed. The place was robbed and they were both killed. So I'm not sure the guy would have even, even have taken the uh, service, even if I'd offered it for free. Uh, on the news on TV, I saw the camera crew came out and, you know, they showed the liquor store and they showed around the, the building and on the back door or something like that. They zoomed in and there was a sticker, uh, such, which I never heard of the company, patrolled by such and such a patrol service. So... Apparently he, or maybe the previous owner or something, had had this service and might not have been satisfactory service. But so that's that story. I guess that's, um, I guess that's it. Like I said, um, I hope pretty quick here to get this for get a 4K monitor. I think it's going to work out good because of the larger territory on the screen. I think it has picture in picture too. So anyway, I think it's going to work out good. Uh, let me know what you think about the stories. If you want to hear more of those or if you'd just rather not hear anything like that. Uh, you know, use the thumbs up. If it doesn't, thumb up doesn't mean you love me and thumb down doesn't mean you I don't know what it means, but if if I see a bunch of thumbs down, it, to me that means well, you probably don't want that type of content. Uh, thumbs up means that you apparently didn't hate it or something. I don't know. I don't know what that thumbs up. Means. Too bad. Of course, it would be asking more of you. Too bad that they can't be some way where you can say, you know, uh, the video on audio is great. Or, you know, the video and audio is great, but I don't like the story or I don't like the content or you talk too fast or you talk too slow. I guess that's what the comment section's for. So, uh, I, I'm going to say it again, too. You people are really, I don't, um, I've got 2,500 2, subscribers. Usually my videos get, you know, 
I mean, some have got 35,000 views or whatever, but generally I think it looks like 100, 150 or something like that is what I get. But I do appreciate the fact that uh, I don't get a lot of thumbs down and everybody is uh, uh, very nice. I don't know if that's because I'm old. If I were a young guy, I think it'd be a somebody's old would be a good to give them thumbs down just for being fucking old. I digress. Thank you very much for watching.